coronary heart disease is the leading cause of death worldwide and accounts for almost 70,000 deaths annually in the UK alone. The modifiable lifestyle risk factors contributing to coronary heart disease have been extensively researched and these include poor dietary choices, physical inactivity and smoking. In contrast to the often recommended heart healthy diet, it has perhaps been both a surprise and a delight to many that recent research has suggested that chocolate in both its milky and dark disguises may have a protective effect against coronary artery disease. Cocoa has the richest flavonol content of all foods on a per weight basis and it is this bioactive to which the health benefits of eating chocolate have increasingly been attributed. A recently published Swedish study found an inverse association between chocolate consumption and myocardial infarction risk. Those eating greater or equal to three to four chocolate servings per week had a 13% relative risk reduction compared to non-consumers. However, the authors acknowledged that chocolate consumption was only assessed by a single question in a baseline food frequency questionnaire, with no distinction made between the type of chocolate or quantity. This is particularly important, bearing in mind that flavonol content of chocolate is likely to be related to the cocoa content. Also, there is a potential dose-dependent relationship between chocolate intake and health outcomes. Further research with more detailed data on chocolate consumption habits and how these vary over time is needed to gain deeper insight and better understanding of the health-enhancing biological pathways. If we accept that evidence supports the role of chocolate in modifying cardiovascular risk outcomes, then we must consider the exact mechanisms behind this. Certainly, we could differentiate these into immediate and long-term effects. Some metabolites are detectable immediately postprandially, but there are also sustained effects on platelet and vascular function. It is these longer lasting effects of chocolate consumption on the human body that are particularly interesting. For example, these effects may be mediated by metabolites derived from chocolate by the gut microbiota. It is worth noting and perhaps surprising that in the cohort study by Larsen et al, the group with the highest chocolate consumption and supposedly lowest myocardial infarction risk were also the cohort with the highest total energy intake and processed meat intake, whilst also having the lowest recorded exercise levels and the least number overweight by body mass index. This is highly suggestive of under-reporting of chocolate consumption in other groups, as it does not seem plausible that consuming more energy, more processed meat and more chocolate would be a sensible concoction for heart health. It must be remembered that with anything in our diets, moderation is often key. The median daily chocolate intake in those studied by Kwok et al worked out at about 150 gram chocolate bar per week. Future studies will need to narrow down exactly how chocolate exerts its beneficial effects on heart health by identifying the optimum type and quantity to consume and indeed whether there are any subgroups of individuals for whom there may be no benefit at all. Ultimately, we must not forget that along with its flavonols, chocolate is rich in both fat and sugar. Thus, whether the advice on the potential benefit of chocolate consumption will be a moment on the lips of scientists, but a lifetime on the hips of the population, remains to be seen.